Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with the FIA Manufacturer Series round number four at Brands Hatch in the Group 4 cars. So again, another race with extremely high tyre rate. I think the tyre rate for this was with the racing mediums and I think it was times 19. So extreme tyre wear, obviously times 19 at Brands Hatch is always going to be a, an issue because it does tend to use up a lot of tyre life. You can see, starting from pole position, pretty obvious it would be an Alpha 4C. The Alpha 4C is pretty much the... Um, OP car in Group 4 at the majority of handling tracks and this track is a it's a bit of a mixture between handling and the speed there was some cars that were like the Lexus for example the BMW um, the Dodge Viper up there as well that were quite reasonably strong at this track however the NSX was quite good I just didn't really hook a lap up in qualifying um, it wasn't the worst car it wasn't the best car but um, I think there was potential definitely to get it in the top six in qualifying I just didn't really hook a lap up at all in qualifying as we got the Cayman in there in P10, another very good car at this track. So starting from P11, did expect a little bit more from qualifying, however, it's not the worst place you can be starting in a top split lobby, obviously. You know, we've started at the back, we've started towards the front, we've started in the middle. It's, it's just, it's all about hitting that one lap in qualifying and that's why we all do a lot of fuel burning at the moment. Hopefully that's something that will get fixed in the future. Hopefully they can do something about the fuel burning and either give us an option to run the amount of fuel that we like in qualifying or alternatively just have no fuel on in qualifying and leave the tyre wear on. That would be another way they could do, go around it. Um, it'd be an option. But you can see all the way through the grid. You can see at the back of the grid we had a very unusual situation where we had an Alpha 4C right at the back of the grid. Don't know what happened in qualifying. Maybe um, uh, made mistakes on both laps, penalties or something. But... Um, I would expect the Alpha 4C to be a lot higher up the grid than that. So starting the race, main aim of this, but this was a, the second um, slot of the day. I was only going to race this one. I did. I really didn't want to race the 11 p.m. race. There's just no way I can stay on for that long, especially we were streaming as well. Um, the missus obviously wants to watch telly. I just said this will be the last race. I'm not doing the 11 o'clock race. So this was the, I think, 9 p.m. race. And I just wanted to get a solid result, really. So the main aim of this race is really to not make mistakes. Um, see if I can make up a couple of positions. I did expect at Browns Hatch in general, you do find a lot of people make errors because it's quite a tricky track. However, in Group 4, it's a little bit easier. Um, in general, you will find that less mistakes will be made in Group 4 than, say, Group 3 because it's a little bit slower paced. The cars have got more grip. It's a lot easier to judge the corners. You can run wide like you see in front of us there and you don't really get punished for it. So in general, you do find there's a little bit less in terms of errors at this track. But this race, again, was very much just about looking after the tyres. And there was also fuel saving involved with this, which kind of helped out the NSX Group 4 car in a way. You can see me mid-shifting around 50% um, um, shifts or sometimes a little bit less um, just to try and save as much fuel as possible because this car is quite... It's, it's reasonable at fuel saving. It's not the best. Um, I think the Cayman might be pretty similar maybe a little bit better on the fuel than the nsx but it's it's a reasonably good car when it comes to fuel saving tire wear i think it's a hard one with the nsx it's not the worst but it's nowhere near as good as some of the other cars like the toyota 86 and the alpha 4c and i would say the Cayman also is a little bit better on the tire wear than the um, nsx in group four so it's it's one of these cars that's just kind of like in the middle it's not great at, um it's not great on the handling tracks but it's not it's by, by no means a bad car, so it's actually quite enjoyable to drive. I do enjoy it. It, it feels nice to drive. I maybe take a little bit more getting used to cars. I do tend to take a while to get used to them. So at the moment, you can see, holding on to this P11, we've got a very fast car behind us in the Jaguar. So maybe not the fastest car through the corners, but if that car gets a sniff of our slipstream, he might be able to um, make a move somewhere. Uh, with the power that car has, it's probably one of the fastest cars in Group 4s, I think, down the straight line. Especially towards the end of the gear range, 4th, um, 5th and 6th gear, I think it becomes very competitive in them gears. Maybe not so much early on, I think it's more towards the end. But at the moment, we're just trying to stay in this slipstream range of the cars in front. You can see we've got some faster cars up ahead, um, the Hi I think Hyundai is up there as well. Quite a powerful car down the straights. And actually quite an underrated car in Group 4. You can actually get some quite good results in that Hyundai as we go through the really fast sweeping corners in front of us here now. And this is reasonable territory for the NSX. It's not it's not the worst car when it comes to corners like this. You can see we're holding on to this group in front. You can see obviously the two, there's a few, there's basically two groups forming already. Um, there's the top group which has got pretty much, I think the M6 is very, sorry not the M6, the M6. 
M4 in it, and also oh, obviously the Alpha 4C, which we all know is just pretty much the most overpowered car you're going to get at Brown's Hatch in terms of tyre wear. And the, the, the problem with this tyre wear range of 9 times 19 was it just excels that car even more. So there was literally, if you had an Alpha 4C in a top shit race in your lobby and the driver put it on pole and drove reasonably well, there's no chance that you're going to beat that car because it's just so much faster than any other car around this track. Even the Toyo 3T6 struggled to really match it around there i'd say it was a good few attempts off and in terms of consistent pace it just struggles to match the alpha 4c at all really you can just carry so much more speed through the corners but starting lap three everything going reasonably okay but we're starting to drop off the slipstream range at the moment and i think at this point maybe i should have used a little bit more fuel up to try and stay really close to the cars in front of us and, um, i did actually drop off the revs a bit you can see i'm not really revving it maximum still i'm just trying to save that fuel I tried to stay very disciplined for the fuel because I wasn't sure if some of the cars up in front would need to put a bit more fuel in or if, you know, to make it to the end. I knew that I could do this without putting any fuel in or just basically pit in and no worries of fuel. Um, the tyres are looking reasonably good. You can see they're not looking too worn at this stage. I think if, if this car had, would have had slightly better tyre wear, not a lot, just a little bit, I would have risked possibly the no stop. But because the tyre wear was... It was just a little bit too much um, your lap times dropped off massively and because most people were not pitting the pit lane loss was only like nine eight or nine seconds so there is no real chance of doing a no stop for me with this car because i think by the final lap if you had the medium tires on your lap times were something like five to six seconds slower than the people that would have pitted and you pretty much lost you'd be losing in two laps you would have lost your pit stop so not really worth it you need the car like the alpha 4c or the toyota toyota 86 to really make that strategy work as we've got that jaguar looming behind us you can see him getting very close i'm just outside the range of the slipstream now so i'm not getting the benefit down the straights that i was before which could cause me problems in terms of getting to the end of the straight that we're about to come up to in a minute as we go through this left-hander. This is an opportunity that in Group 4 you can actually, if you're close enough to the rear, you pick up quite a good slipstream. So you're going to see the Jaguar now picking that slipstream up. And we, I have not got the slipstream with the Cayman in front, so I'm going to be lacking speed. I'm going to have to go defensive to the right-hand side of the track, but it's very hard for a car like the Jaguar to actually get round the outside is Because what I do is I just break a little bit earlier, Hold it on the inside, then get on the power very aggressively. And you can see he just gets massive amount of understeer from the loss of downforce behind us and can't really do anything about that. So loses a bit of time. Then he runs wide again there. And I think at this point he decides um, probably quite wisely as well. I was actually thinking about it live on stream. I think I said, should I pit now or should I stay out to that five? And I think really I decided I was going to stay out and do another lap. And I really think that I should have pitted at this stage because you're going to see... We have slightly better tyre wear than that Jaguar anyway in the MSX. It's not massively better, but it is better. So he's going to go in the pits now. And he's about two seconds behind us at this stage. You can see him really in the distance in the mirror there. He's pitted there. And he's obviously going for the undercut, which will work because obviously the tyres are starting to feel a little bit old. I'm going to fast forward it now for this outlap. Sorry for the inlap because there's literally no action going on. We've got no cars around us. So we're just going to fast forward until we get to the pit entry. And we're going to show you why I think that it would have probably been a little bit more advisable that I would have pitted on that lap because it was worth at least two, three seconds and then you, you run the risk of them under the people doing the undercut getting past you and maybe holding you up a bit and it, it just I think it would have made more sense. Fuel-wise, we're okay on fuel. Some people have got a bit more fuel than us. So everyone had done really good fuel saving. I think everyone's really got on top of the fuel saving now on this game. They all know how to, like use their cars even if they're not particularly great with the fuel they, they know how to do it as we have an incident up ahead between a Toyo 36 and a Cayman there with Tuscan and Rick 918 I think it was coming together on the going down through turn one and both losing control of the car so there's two places but what you'll see is we lost a position to Steve Gaiman in that Jaguar however at this stage I felt like maybe I don't really need to panic about this because I know that the Jaguar is going to be very aggressive on its front tyres and he's got to do a a seven lap stint on these mediums with times 19 so i was quietly confident that this race could come back to me and i, I might be able to jump past steve gaming but that's the first mistakes that we've seen in this race so far we're now on lap six like i said at brown's actually normally do see a few errors but uh, that's the first mistake that we've seen obviously two cars going side by side through turn one didn't work they've both spun and that's two positions gained already 
Um, but like I say, I would have liked to have gained a few more positions. And we now jump through to lap eight as we were stuck behind, not really making any progress. But now on lap eight, you can see that the tire wear is starting to have some effect on the way we're both driving. And I'm actually feeling like my car's getting to a point now where it's a bit more competitive than that Jaguar in front of us. Even though he's got the straight line advantage, I definitely have the tire wear and cornering advantage. You can see on the brakes as well. I think the brakes. Um, we're a little bit better on the NSX so I could really push it into the corners a little bit more even though we're having to do fuel saving but you can see getting into that slipstream now and as the car gets lighter I found that I could use a bit more fuel so pushing quite aggressively down the straight sometimes trying to get into the slipstream the most important thing I need to do is get in that slipstream if I can get in the slipstream then I can start the short shifting again and just save the fuel that I've just used up so looking now you can see on this replay camera it's getting very close I'm three four temps behind him so I've started to put a bit of pressure on him and this is what I needed to do put him under pressure make him push them tires make him wear the tires out a little bit more than what he probably would like to and push the brake in a bit more than what he would like as he runs a little bit wide through the corner there kick some dust up and we get a really good exit from that corner very nicely and I go to the right look up the inside I wasn't actually going to go for that move and there was actually a little bit of these you see there was a tiny bit of contact there when we actually went through the replay and um, you can watch this on the live stream I didn't think I hit him but um, when we go on the actual replay it wasn't contact there was a natural gap of about a foot and a half but somehow contact happened so it was kind of a desync issue but we still made the move work I think it was fair in the end we did have our nose up the inside but I actually backed out of the move and gave space there but with the desync issue did knock him slightly when we watched the replay so apologies to you Steve Gaming but still I think it was reasonably fair we it wasn't like it was a deliberate thing it's because the game with the connection issues sometimes different people on different parts of the tracks and the game actually recognizes so the contact was very minimal there but we make that move and make it stick through turn one which was the main thing because through turn I, I was a little bit worried that he might be able to get the run on the outside of the NSX with the speed because just looking at it in the mirror now as we go down the straight now you can see the advantage he's getting down the straight just look how fast that Jaguar is as soon as he gets through to that fourth gear range that again is where I say this car really does excel this Jaguar um, the NSX that I'm in not so great in the top end so that's where the worry was for me but now I managed to defend that corner I felt pretty confident with the lap fresher tyres so in reality that's 19 laps fresher tyres that I've got on my car and I think that my car was better on the tyres than that Jaguar so I've got much better tyres now so through the corners I'm able to push a lot more and you can see it he's really having to hang on into that Jaguar you can see it in the mirror the, the, the movement of the car the way it's behaving it looks a lot like it's struggling with on the steer a lot more you can see how close he's getting to the curbs I'm having quite a lot of space on the curbs I'm not really risking anything so you can see my car seems to be reasonably safe at the moment as he's picking up the slipstream again though this is the main thing I need to try and break that slipstream we're into P9 um, I think um, Sky Pittman pitted on lap 6 or 7 during when we skipped through he obviously went for the overcut rather than the undercut which I mean it wasn't really going to work from my perspective but if you're at the back stock anyway you might as well try something different and try and make up some places some fresh tyres but you can see the group ahead as we come through to the final two laps are a little bit closer now so I've actually gained a little bit on this battle for I think it's for P5 so it shows you although we're a few seconds back I think it's about three four seconds back from that group we weren't too far away from the pace to get reasonably good points for this round it was a little bit frustrating that I didn't manage that qualifying lap and I think if I would have went for that undercut rather than the overcut we might have um, not been having to worry about obviously Steve Gaming quite so much as we are now because we went in the pits a few seconds ahead of him. I think we would have came out ahead, would have been able to stay out and then I think this, with the advantage I would have had over tyres, we wouldn't have had to have been driving defensive and stuff like that and the overtaking moves and stuff like that. I wouldn't have probably lost so much time there. And we might have got a little bit closer to that battle that's going on up in front. We might have even been able to get in the slipstream range of it. And I think if I could have got in the slipstream range, we might have stood a chance of staying in there. I don't think we would have had the tyres to last to really push them too aggressively but um, who knows with another car in there what could happen but at the moment though not really much I could do you can see we're gaining a little bit on them every lap it's nothing drastic we're pretty much matching um, P5 time at this stage as they're starting to battle a little bit up ahead you can see that going into turn one it looked like two cars maybe three car wide going into the corner so that was good for me I was thinking I'm not going to give up at this stage we might as well carry on pushing as Steve Gaming runs a little bit wide through turn one he's definitely suffering in that mirror you can see the Jaguar really just the front tires are just scrubbing on the ground they're not gripping they're just rolling off and not turning in the way you want the car to so he's losing a lot of traction and he looks like he's actually going to be coming under a threat from another car I think it's the Alpha 4C that started at the back of the grid and that shows you how OP that car is because he's come right through the field um, 
I'm surprised, he, I don't know if he knows that. I'm guessing he's actually pitted. I personally would have no stopped in the half of 4C from the back of the grid. But he's actually looked like he's pitted and he's coming through on fresh tyres. As he looks like he's going to be able to make a move on Steve Gaiman. Steve Gaiman's really suffering with them tyres. He's actually got past Steve Gaiman, you can see there. And now we're gaining on that group ahead. And there's, this is why I didn't want to give up because it only takes two cars to come into contact, get a penalty, knock each other off. And we could gain a couple of positions. You see just in the distance, you could just see two cars going side by side through this corner, which is not what you want to happen when you're involved with that because it's such a dangerous corner anyway. But we're just trying to keep it calm. Now, we had to do a lot of fuel saving towards the end of the stint. You see the fuel is very low. So you'll see shifting very early. I realized at this stage I needed to do massive short shifting just so I didn't get overtaken by the Alpha 4C behind me. I think I actually did run out of fuel just on the line as we come up to line now you're going to see. We pretty much ran out of fuel a few a few meters before the finishing line. You can see just about there, just started to run out of fuel. So made it pretty much dead on the line. Um, judged the fuel pretty much spot on. I think we, I don't know if we actually ran out then. It might have been the other race we ran out, but I think we had like less than one percent left over the finish line and managed to hold on to P9. So not the best result that we could have got. I think you know P9 in the top split lobbies, not nothing to be ashamed of. You know, a lot of fast drivers in these top split lobbies and. The, the, the worrying thing, though, is, again, we don't come away with good points. Um, but like I say, I wasn't going to do the last race of the day at 11 p.m. It was a little bit too late for me. I was too tired. And I was quite happy with a P9. So we walk away from that race with reasonable points. Nothing too impressive. Um, the driver in split three, I think, must have picked up more split points than us because I did check the other Honda. I think he's overtook me now. He actually, he's got a fifth, just over a 50k DR rating, I think 54, 55, something like that. So he's probably in split three or four, and he managed to get 2,000 points from I don't know what position. But it, it is a shame because I think if I would have been in a lobby a little bit lower, we would have got more points. But I'm not going to drop my DR, and it's an issue that Polyphony hopefully will sort out in the future. It's something they need to look at because, um, you know, there's many videos out there at the moment talking about this. Um, Tijani's Z28. I don't know if Z28 brought the point situation up actually, but also Eries did a video talking about the point situation. Although I don't agree with everything that some people are saying within the points. Um, some people, I think there's a view that P19 in top split should get more points than P1 in second split. I don't personally agree with that. I think there needs to be a crossover of about P12 to P13, where if you finish P12 to 13 in top split, you get the same points as P1 in split two. But I think anything like P13 and 14 in top split shouldn't be getting more points than P1. There needs to be a balanced crossover point, even up to P10 maybe. It's something around there, P10. So halfway in top split matches those points in the second split. I think that's that could be a compromise with the points, just to make sure that it's still fair. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. I enjoyed the race. It was still fun to be involved with. And it was a shame that no one really made any mistakes in front of me. But we come away with a P9, top 10 finish. And we move on to the next round, which will be at Tokyo, which we don't know. I really have no idea how this race is going to go. I've not really practiced it that much. We did a brief stream the other, um, last night. And we'll see how that one goes. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'll be back very soon.